Yo, yo, boys, back with another video. Today we're going to be doing the good old Faz DH, and this video is mainly going to be about outplaying rogues in general. I mean, there are some other classes, but it's mainly rogue. And there's one thing rogues do, and as you can see, the moment my healer gets sapped, I'm going to instantly hop back, and then I'm, my goal is to CC the rogue as he's, you know, as he CCs my healer, I'm going to CC him. He kidneys me. Now, unless he blades his here or shadowy duels me, I'm not going to trink it. Every time a rogue faces a uh, DH, all they're trying to do is get your trinket without using their blades and then one shot you in a shadowy duel. That's all they're trying to do. So I'm doing a, uh, a gold carry here, trying to get this guy to 2100. We went from like 1850 to about 2k. So we got to finish up tomorrow. He ended up wanting, or I, get, I think it was like an hour for a certain amount of time. So there's that. So we're going to run it up tomorrow or tonight actually. So again, he didn't use uh, his blade, so we're not going to trink it. So no matter what, we're not going to trink it uh, until he pretty much uses the blades. And there's a lot of these times where I pre-evasion his go. So the moment my healer gets CC'd, that's when I click my evasion, or that's when I click something. So here he's going to CC my healer. So here he kidneys me, it's fine. He, again, the only time a rogue is going to be able to do anything to me is pretty much is if he blades. It's like... People would have a mis like a misunderstanding of, you know, a rogue can just 100 you anytime. No, their only time to do anything to you is on blades. Otherwise, they have to have a DBS with them to carry and they pretty much do the burst and then they one shot you after they get everything. But no, you're not going to die to a, a, you know, you'll be fine. So here again, he doesn't blades, can't get me to 9% HP, so there's that. He gets a full wrap off the thing. It doesn't really matter that much. I just stun him. Uh, he gets a little bit of damage going here. As you can see, my leech is pretty insane. So I end up healing a little bit to my like by myself, pretty much. So we get topped off here. Literally. Lol. So, at this point, the only time we have to use anything is when our CC, like the moment our healer is CC'd, then we click. Otherwise, we're doing damn. He actually ends up fading the kidney. So he's very mad about that one. He's going in for the Hodge to a rep. He ends up trinketing my stun. Again, he's not blazing on me, so and he also doesn't dance, so he didn't even dance. So, uh, uh, this, like I said, the main thing is this rogue is just trying to pretty much get my trinket and then one shot me. Otherwise, you know, that, he, rogues just don't know what to do after that point. If you ever face somebody that does something like I do and they know how to hold their CDs in play, you have to instantly blades. So you have to literally blade the blades a second go and just kill them like a normal. You have to play like a normal two v two comp. You can't just go off of a. It, it's not gonna work. But a lot of rogues don't know how to do that because they're so used to just playing this certain way. They're like, oh well, if I don't get his trinket, then I can't win. No, you definitely can. You just have to actually play like you normally would instead of relying off a one shot, which is uh, questionable. So here my guy gets Hodge, they're about oom, we still have a lot of mana, plenty of mana, I think we're actually full mana, because they've literally done zero damage to us. I pre-darkness the shadowy duel, so on the one go that he does, I pre, like, completely outplay him in every regard, and he ends up getting taken out at this point in time. Uh, the one time he does go, I end up pre-darknessing it like a god, so, you know, the game's pretty much over as long as we live, I still have nether, so again, it's GG. Now, had he done that from the very start, it would have been a different ball game because they are supposed to beat us. A rogue is supposed to be a DH. Now, um, you know, at this point, I trink it. He doesn't have blades. He could vanish to reset it, but at this point, um, he doesn't have trink it, and I have nether, so it's pretty much GG, and have a good one. So I just say I pre dart his go on Shadow, a Shadow we duel. So the one go that he did do, I out. I outplayed him every single go, uh, like you. So this rogue, all the rogues do the same thing. I didn't face one rogue other than maybe, maybe the last one. The one rogue that I lost to. Now there's a difference between. There's only one comp that's supposed to beat us a hundred percent, and that's Resident Rogue. That's because Resident counters my healer. If my guy, if my healer was a Resident, it'd probably be a little different. Uh, but Resident is. Honestly, Rusted shouldn't lose to anything other than a Rusted So here I pre backflip. He ends up waiting. Like a, that was a pretty good by him. At this point, I have to train now. So I trinket darkness. We have dome. 
So the moment he blades, you have to trade, otherwise he will just kill you. Even if you think, even if it's a cheap shot go, he still will kill you. So had I not clicked any, anything, he would have just killed me. So at this point, we just go normally. We're doing big damn. I don't really care about the other rogue. He's trying to get a restyle, so ends up not going for it. I'm just pumping damage out. I use my AoE. So here I pre-backflip the stun, and then I pre-kite him out. So... We get an entire, I literally kind of, he had to use his vanish, evasion, everything just to get to me. And I, that's what happens when you preemptively kite somebody out. Just like that outlaw did to me last video, which it's very cringe to do so. But uh, since I was on a DH, it's a lot easier to do. Because obviously I just have so much mobility, so I can kind of just do whatever I want. And on top of that, obviously the rogue went for the CC instead of just going straight for me. So, you know, there was that. So this guy ends up trying to sap off the fear. Let's see if he gets it. It looks like he doesn't. So at this point, you know, great. Uh, I end up getting missing kick. All well. I pre backflip this guy just to keep pressure on him because I don't want to waste my fell barrage for because I don't, you only want to use your your fell whenever you have your AOE up. That way you're getting that like there's an extra percentage on damage. So here I end up pre evasioning a stun. So I see that the moment my guy gets stunned, I'm just going to pre-evasion it. So here I pre technically pre-evasion his blades go. So again, on his secondary burst, we end up using a CD. He actually ends up almost killing me through it. So here I, I just nether. He shadowy duels me. He ha has blades up. So this is where you definitely trade. And then he mind controls so he can't get any CC off. So there's that. So and then we get a fear. I swap here. At this point, they're not looking too good. I ain't going to lie. They've basically gotten... You know, as long as you're trading CDs, you're going to be pretty high. So here we mind games. They're looking, we're in a good spot here. I have Trinket back up. We have PS, Swap, and Trinket, and we have Dome coming back up, and I have my Burst coming up, and obviously I have Evasion. So the moment he stuns my my uh, healer, I can click. So here he ends up having, this problem with having Rupture on your DPS target is you can't preemptively gouge. So anybody that pre, so if you're having a hard time for somebody that preemptively uses cooldowns, don't rupture them. All you have to do is you have to gouge them, and then you go CC. Now if it's like a warrior or something, there's nothing you can do. So here I pre-evasion again. The moment my healer CC'd, we just instantly blur, and we stop his go again, and then we get a good trinket fear. He honestly didn't even need a trinket, but he just did. He ends up gouging here, so there's that. So this is what I mean. If he does, so all you all he'd have to do is how do you counter somebody that pre's you, pre gouge them, and then you do you know then you're fine, just like he basically did right there. He gouged and then went, except he didn't do it on you know. So here he triple cheap shots. We we get PS here, which honestly probably didn't even need to again, because again it, it, without blades rogues don't do any damage, and unless they have a mage or a hunter or something with them, they're just ne doing doing negative damage the entire game. That's why a lot of people just don't understand that a rogues, people just complain about subs or rogues in general, but unless they're popping every CD, they don't do any damage. It's literally all you have to do is play. So again, I pre-jump, I pre incap I pre-kite him, and I, oh my god, he's just getting, you just don't get more outplayed than when he's getting outplayed. And these are just casual games, because obviously, uh, I'm just on a DH, so I'm not a rogue, I don't have to like... You know, I just have varies of CDs, I have varies, and I'm also playing with a Disc Priest. So, it's like, we have pretty much a lot of cooldowns versus Rogue. And especially when you're, you know, when I play Rogue, I know how to counter them. It just makes it double the trouble for this guy. He pretty much has no chance, even though he's supposed to beat me pretty much to like 9-1. to um, Especially as a DH. But again, I mean, at this point, if, if I play like this... Then no, he's not gonna have a chance, unless he pre gouges me on the spot. So here he thought I would trinket the blind, but I knew he was gonna be going on me. So I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm not even gonna bother. Sure, let him get a little sippy cup here. So here he goes, my priest, my priest pieces and then trinkets, which was a really bad trade. But uh, I think here I end up trinketing just to kill this guy. So you know, I don't do it yet. I don't know when I do it, but I think I trinket here soon, just to literally, because he was like, I knew he was dead and. You know, I was like, hey, I'm not going to wait. So here I trinket, and then he's dead. And then I know that this guy is going to be able to shadowy duel me. So I'm just going to evasion right out of this stun. So I'm going to basically stun him, and then I'm going to pre-evasion on top of it. That way, if he does live my stun, I have evasion up, so he basically can't kill me. 
So this game was pretty cringe, so I ain't gonna lie. This is the pure definition of counter. And there's pretty much nothing we can do against it. Now, if you play it like this, even if you outplay them, you automatically will lose. Because he's a rested dude. And we faced these guys before, except he was playing something else. So here I kind of knew we were out of luck. So here, even though I preemptively stop his entire go, I get his trinket. I backflip into an in cap. So I actually end up pre evasioning his go too. I end up almost dying. He cyclones me in the shadowy duel. So there's that. So I get cyclone in a shadowy duel. He ends up tranking at 100. So these guys are playing awful. Just, I mean, tranking at 100% HP. That's crazy. So here I pre backflip the Kenny. Or, no, I don't. He cheap shots me, okay? Uh, he has no damage here, so we were pretty much fine. He iron brokes at 100%. So this is the type of people that uh, you can lose to. This is the difference between the rogue carrying. I think the rogue is carrying at this point, but um, even though they're, you know, questionable. So here I just backflip. I push in. I have evasion coming up here, so worst case I have to evasion. At this point, all this guy needs to do is, all he has to do is he can stun me, he can he can root me or cycle me. He has so many options. So here I see that I pre evasion his go again, and again he gets the best RNG that you can get, and he actually gets me from like 80% to 30% through pre evasion at, a, at before he even stunned me. So all he has to do here is cycle me. I could trink it, but no, you can't do that. Because if I trink it, he has blades coming back up. So all this guy will have to do is literally... Again, this is the difference between a rest dude and a priest. So here, I have to trink it. And actually, no, I don't trink it. Here, I still don't trink it. Because if I trink it, I'm going to die now. I'm just going to be dead. So here I am, back flipping just to stop some damage. I pre incap just in case he tries to step my back flip. So here, he preemptively swaps here. So here he tries to fake cast me, he blinds me, I can't trink it because if I trink it, again, he just shadowy duel kills me. I get full rooted, full rooted again. Okay, I finally get a connect for two seconds, I finally get a stun off. Get some damn drawing, nope, I get gouged. So this is again, see when they know that I'm going to pre, so here I just trink it dark, it's on his blades, there's nothing else I can do. If I don't trink it dark, I just die, like I literally got down to 50% through my dark. I get full cyclone, so that's great. I'm gonna get cyclone again. Just kidding, I kick. So here he's just gonna run to the pillar because you know it's rusted. I'm trying to chase him. I get full rooted. Nice, nice. So here I'm getting, uh, I'm getting aggravated. I get stunned. So that by the time I get to connect, I'm already stunned again. At this point, I'm pretty much dead. I have nether. So here I backflip. I look, look how much I kite this guy. So I kite him, I stun him, and then I incap him. And I and then I nether off that, so I literally completely outplayed them at eight percent HP, and then I get full cyclone, and this is the definition of counter comp. And there's nothing I can do about it, so I stun him here, but at this point it just doesn't really matter, and we end up getting taken out. So rest of shaman and rit, I get full lightning lassoed, and I'm like bruh. So I can't trink it because obviously if he comes back here again, I think I trink it the hex here because it's like bro. I'm not sitting 12 to 15 seconds from one person, especially if you're if you're playing like as a healer as anything. Healer shouldn't even get CC in the first place, especially when you're already playing with every DPS that has CC. But okay. So here I swap here. I killed the totem. I get knocked the moment I actually kind of connect. At this point, I think this guy. Let's see what he does. So, okay, nice. So I get towed him immediately. Okay, I finally... So the moment I can't connect with him, he just does whatever he wants. Okay, I'm still chasing. Nice, finally caught up with him again. Alright. Oh, nope, get root again. I kill the root. I just swap to the right here, because it's like, bro, I'm not going to chase a Shalom that can just sh shift forms and never be cut. So we're going to go whoever we can... Oh, nope, I get less. Alright. So still, this so the Shaman has CC'd me the entire game since the game has started. And I finally got to play. But uh, again, it doesn't really matter as much. And I'm not running reverse. Even though we're so right, you probably should be running reverse. It's like, I'm just going full on damn. So here I see that he hodges. I just DR stun him on the hodge. It's whatever. And then I pre-evasion off that. Because he has a little bit of, he's like a, what's called a mini go. Here I incap him. At this point, we're looking really good. Now we have, we have dark. And we still have a lot of stuff here. So we've gotten bubble, bop. 
and we've gotten double trinket. So we've gotten a lot of CDs. I killed a totem here. I don't know what that totem was. I maybe thought I wouldn't I wasn't gonna kill it. Here this guy's literally hard casting healing wave, which is maybe maybe that's the meta, maybe that's how you're supposed to heal as a shaman. I remember when healing as a shaman used to be like Riptide. It used to be like totems in the Riptide, I think that was like season one for Dragonfoot. So here I'm still going Ret. Ret has basically zero CDs. At this point we just double sun and I think we take him out. Nope, okay, he somehow still has more CDs, so he land hands. So after the fifth CD that we got in this game, he has Trinket back, but at this point I could a, we pretty much kill him right here, honestly. He has no more healing. He has Spirit Link, but again, this is like 2k CR, so it's not really high. Here's another game, Rest of Druid. Thankfully, this was a uh, free beyond, because uh, the Rest of Druid just decided to, uh, uh, question, I was probably a carry or something. You can just tell in some of these games where it's like questionable what people will do. So here we open this guy. This guy first global clicks every CD. Very nice. Here he pre-grips, which is fine. All my guy has to do is dome his damage. So here I'm going to preemptively... Um, basically I'm going to CC this guy off of him. So here I'm getting rooted, cyclone, every... And I just trinket DR. I'm like, bro, I'm not sitting all the CC. So he actually grips my AoE stun, which is annoying. But it's whatever. So here I pop all my CDs, and again, you know, we just have on here. When we pop burst, we're the same as a DK. So this guy tries to out heal it instead of just clicking it. So he actually gets mind games and doesn't. And it is just he like I don't know what he thought was gonna happen. All he had to do is trink or iron bark, and he try actually tried to sit my entire burst. Which is, listen, ladies and gentlemen, as a healer, if somebody clicks all their CDs, you have to click a CD. If you try to just heal through it or sit through it, you will most likely die, and then it's all on you. It's nobody else's fault but your own. That's just how it is. If you don't have to respect people's cooldowns, then the game's just bad. I mean, the game's bad in general, but you know what I'm saying. So again, we're facing another sub-rogue, and this comp, I mean, overall, it's, our comp is good but bad. Wrestler D is just 10 times better than anything else. So here I pre, I would have pre incapped him, but I jumped too far. So here I know he's not going to kill me because he's not using blades. So we're going to go age foul mainly, but we can kill both. So we'll end up looking for both. So here he ends up getting out of the fear. I'm going to pop off. He's going to CC my healer. We get bubble right off the bat. We use our burst here. We do hell, ma, ma, ma. I gotta get that added revenue, I just realized. So that was Hamumu. That's what I was gonna say, YouTube. But, um. I was about to say, um, a cuss word, but I, I can't say that. Or else I'm losing, you know what I'm saying? Losing all that revenue. I need that revenue. So. Pretty much, we're running up here. And. We are aligning our healer a little bit, but at the same point. It doesn't matter that much, because unless this guy, the only time this guy can kill us is on blade. So as long as I just trinket and use a CD, trinket dark, trinket nether, whenever he clicks bait. So here I preemptively kite him a little bit back to my healer. He gets full repped off the hodge. Again, these type of rogues don't know how to play their class to their full potential. Because if they did, the moment the moment the guy, the moment I didn't trinket in the opener on your bomb, should be an opener or even the second go should be an eye opener. Oh wait, he's not gonna trinket unless I click every CD. So you just have to play it like a normal game. Use your cooldowns. Just you have to kill. You have to do an actual go. Like they're doing solid setups now. They just needed the road needs to know how to play. It's not. It's not anything. This is not hurtful words. This is a fact. If, if he played correctly, he'd probably win, just because it's a rogue versus DH. But instead, uh, they're wanting to just do with some shadowy dole cheese kill, instead of just actually playing it how you're supposed to. But we end up winning the game here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment for the algorithm, and enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys did. Comment, like, and subscribe. I'm still working on the cooldown video. I know I've been saying that for a minute, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace, peace.